guest for today from Kilaleshwa Ward, a man on a mission to make sure these buildings that are being proposed. Hey, Manzeev, how many how many stories? Fifteen stories. 75? 75 stories? 75. In, in Nairobi? In Nairobi. Is it doable? I don't think it's doable. In for Nairobi? Any, not, not even Nairobi. Mm. Even the New York. Mm. If today you want to build New York 75 floors, you know there are things they have to take into consideration. So imagine you want to do it in Nairobi. You know, if you are talking about 30, 40, you do, do one or two, three. Mm. But somebody wants to tell you that you want to do 24, 25 floors to be the normal. How? With what infrastructure? We don't have the roads. People are building beacon to beacon, which means that even them who are building and they want to to expand the infrastructure, you cannot do it. You cannot expand the infrastructure for even their own sake. Then imagine a situation where, Nick, five years ago, you bought a property, penthouse, seventh floor or twelfth floor, yeah, mm -hmm. for 45 million or 50 million. But somebody is selling you that the same property you bought, very nice penthouse, now you cannot see the sun. Is worth only 20 million. Mm, 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 mm. So the, every new development is cannibalizing the old ones. So what they need to do is zone, give specific heights for zones. So if you go to Kilalecha, you say that we are going to do here a maximum of 12 floors. Please, please let it remain 12 floors. Because there's no reason why you allowed seven floors there. Then now you're allowing 30, like Makui, Othaya Road. Mm -hmm. There are twin towers there, yes. which went to 30. 30 floors, that's yes. a big white one. Yes. Right there. yes, but there are machinates there, people are renting for 400,000. Right below? Yes, and now these machinates you cannot rent for more than 100,000. And ambassadors used to stay there. Because these new developments are cannibalizing the old developments. So these people also have to bring down. But what is the quality? Because the roads we have, which is supposed to, the, the, the big roads you're talking about, then also be, these people, the new development, they build beacon to beacon. So you don't even have spaces for sewer you know, expansion. You don't have spaces for road expansions. You don't have spaces, even if you wanted to expand the water capacity in that area. You know, like in zone four, where Kilimani and Kilalesha is, yes. the maximum is, is ground plus four. Okay. Which mm -hmm. means you need not to go beyond four floors. But what happens at Kanjo is somebody sits and says that you want to build 17. Then minus four is 13. So this extra 13, you're going to be giving them an extra bribe of 1.5 million for extra floors. You can give them in cash or you can give them in formal apartments. That's wow. what. So whenever you're trying to block these developments, you're standing between somebody and money. Mm. It's basically greed. Mm. Because this Nairobi, you need to plan for the future. Me and you, our children and grandchildren, how will they operate from this city? And you see, every time such things happen, people run away from the city, from the situation. You saw in Buruburu, very nice middle class estate. Yeah. And when the mess of the extension started, people ran away and went to build Kitangela, Rongai, and so on. But, but those people... Also came with those bad tabias. Yes, and turned the same places into slums. Like, have you been to Mlolongo? <laughs> and Xiokimau. It's an idea. <laughs> you mm -hmm. see, you don't want to be there. Yeah. And you know, they thought that they are running away from the problem, so they went and created a new problem there. And now, you know, we are talking about going up. We are worried about how high you can go. But should you also not be worried about how low you can go? Because you want to go, like in London, mm. you're in the good cities, you see a metro system, where you see an M, you can go down there, right. take your train and go wherever. But in Nairobi, people are building, the Chinese have the capacity to build six floors down. Are they doing it? Yeah. In some places they do basement of six, four, three. So if you want to build a metro, today you're also going to be worried because the city needs to plan for integrated transport system where you can come from your plane flights you're coming for a conference you can use the same ticket for your bus you know for your taxi and so on and i don't know why you're going you're going to plan for that the mass transport system in the future when you don't invest in it in fact, you, you, you had posted something about that uh, transport uh, situation yes yes i moved a motion uh -huh. I, I moved a motion in the county assembly uh, which, uh, you know, the, the, the people are greedy, Don't <laughs> they try to oppose it. But I wish that we need to think, we can think of many generations ahead. Because for Nairobi to survive, for Nairobi to be sustainable, the life here to promote your positive mental health being, I think you need to, to plan for its expansion. And the expansion should not go up. You can expand to Moranga, you know, Kiambu, Machakos and so on. The metropolis can expand, you know. And so that transport thing was, was it thrown out or? No, it was passed.
But you know, we are just compelling the executive to do. The executive can decide not to do it. We're just telling them that, can you please plan for an integrated transport system which will pay attention to... Because what you, you had, you, you saw the previous government where somebody went to Thicker Road and used lipstick to paint... The the BRT. <laughs> <laughs> and called it BRC. Yeah. Then now there's a there's a point where we are saying about Nairobi is a railway city. Mm -hmm. You know all these dis disjointed plans, but can they come with a plan? Because uh, what we realize is that Nairobi is developing, but with human is not in the center of the development. The expressway, the people were not at the center. The cars were the center of the development. Mm. It was very comfortable for the cars, but is it comfortable for the human beings? If today you get an accident at the expressway. How will you get off that expressway? If today you want to cross uh, Chiromo Road, yeah, how will you cross it when there's no allocation for the human traffic? Are you saying this city is just a badly planned city? Uh, it's, the human is not at the center of planning. And it's poorly planned and it's crashing. You know, you see the development in Kileleshua, Lavington. You know, you see now Loretio. You see people are building 12 floors in Loretio. How is how do you <laughs> where people used to have uh, chunks of land of 10, 12 acres? You know, how do you now start building those high rise apartments there? I think there should be zones where you just you cannot go beyond three floors. So, are you saying that it's getting harder and harder to work with the, the county government because of all these stumbling blocks, like the people who want to take bribes and uh, approve extra floors? You, you, coming you, with this, is, this is how Kanjuas this is how Kanjo has worked, but we wish that it changes because. I think what has been lacking in, in, in with the county governments, you know, county government is a very positive thing because for the first time in 10 years, we are seeing an emergence of middle class, which has never stepped into Nairobi. You go to Tana River, you know, Kakamega, Busia, Kisumu, you get people, Kitambo, for you to make 200,000, 1 million shillings, you should step into Nairobi and get a job in Nairobi. Yes. But now you're seeing an emergence of very middle class earning proper, they have never stepped in Nairobi. But Lacking at the center of, uh, especially Nairobi management, yes. is the middle class. Because even at the elective politics of Nairobi, you don't want to participate in the election of MCS. Yeah? You have left it to the most illiterate, to the most uh, uncultured to do it. The people who get elected there, a good number of them are thugs. You know, the people who are not, uh, they don't have the capacity to develop the, the budget. You know, to sit through and see the CFSPs and the ADPs and, you know, the development plans to ensure that they, they align with the vision of the country. Then the person at the top operates as a solo being. You know, the governor can do, because the governor is very powerful. And by design, because I think the, the MC is a natural competitor to the MPs, the MPs designed the seat to be powerless. So what? Because the MCs, M, M, MPs, you know, pass the motion, uh, pass the bills to to allocate funds. So what they did is that the MC, MCs, you oversight the governor, but it's the governor who assigned to, who has to sign your salary every month. How is that going to be? You saw in Embu, you impeached that governor for nine times, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nine times, and he kept coming back. He kept because he had a lot of funds and he's you saw what is happening in Meru. Mm -hmm. you, all these governors have you ever impeached a governor here? Do you mean that you have the perfect governors? You know, I, I think it's 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 messy. Then also a situation where you know we created forty seven governments, county governments. But in actual sense we created ninety four. Because the governor and the speaker have almost equal powers and they're leading different units of the governments. Speaker is leading the assembly, governor is leading the executive. But the speaker has to beg the governor for funds. Why doesn't the exchequer just allocate funds to the assembly? So that the assemblies can contain rogue governors properly. So that you don't have to depend on the Senate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now you have to depend on the Senate. But the, spe the, the speaker also has to depend on these MCS. MCS, you are given 109,000 to employ three staff members. Yeah? For three months, that's a quarter. Every quarter, you're giving 109,000. These three staff members, by law, those category of staff, you should not pay them less than 30,000. Then you remain with money not to rent an office for more than 18,000 shillings. So, like in Kerelesho, where are you going to get an office to rent for 18,000 shillings? That must be Mama, Mama Josephine Kiosk <laughs> right behind that there. <laughs> so, you create a Mabati. <laughs> you create a Mabati to serve the middle class. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Which is very unfortunate. But this is the only seat which the middle class needs.
because you as a middle class, you don't you don't need much. You just need order. You just need the markets to work. You just need the streetlights to work. The roads, you know, the traffic system. You just need clarity. You know, you just need order in the in the estates. You know, kiosk is here, a pharmacy is here. You know, a butcher is here. Can it be clean? Can it be well maintained? You know, kanjo, governor and MCs, MCs should deliver to you that one, but. You deny the MCAs the resources. So what they do they do? They look for other ways of getting resources. You know, they come with the kiosk culture, mutona enda container, and after container kumi, you put the containers, the ten containers there, kata kata, every container five doors, get 20,000 from each door, you know, get an extra 100,000, 200,000, it becomes messy. What what do you introduce? You go in some areas like Kasarani and Bakasi, you see the kind of mess the kiosk create. Yeah, they tell you that we are employing our boys. Or oh, the cow washes, mm. the low hanging fruits, the cow washes, then you extra money get, you can employ some young boys with Boda Boda there, you know, to, 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 to support him. It's very unfortunate, but I believe that we can change the Nairobi if the middle class get involved in the politics. The other thing, Robert, is remember the rains the other day? Yes. It just rained for oh, one night. Yes. <laughs> one <laughs> night. Yes. yes. And you saw the mess it created. From the expressway to industrial area, yes, and seven people killed. Yes, drainage system. You know, I, I, I retrieved two bodies mm. just here behind Shelby Drive. We retrieved two bodies, a very young, you know, able bodied, whom we saw the other day. Ooh. These are people we went to the the wards to talk to. Maslin Makoa, you know, she's she was selling milk in one of the milk ATMs. Mm. And then you're told that you know Maslin was swept away because you, you know somebody who sells things become a very good contact for the MCS. You always go there, you meet them, you know, by the roadside doing something. You know, they always give you the feedback from the community. Right. So you interact with them a lot. Then the next time you are told that Unajua Ali Ali Bebuana match when she was boarding Boda Boda at night. Because the the bridge she was passing on, the water was flowing on top. Then Okadarao Iyo Maji, but the bridge didn't have the rails. Mm. So the water just went with her and the Boda Boda rider. The Boda Boda rider was rescued by passers by, and the Boda Boda was rescued, but she got lost up to around 8 a.m. the next day wow. from 11 p.m. And when we got her, she was, uh, she was in a very bad condition, you know. She was dead, yes, but the body was not somebody whom, you know, you could say that you, 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 you knew. It was a very unfortunate incident. Mm. And uh, it came because of our bad planning. Because I believe that those things, we could correct them. You know, like now, see the drainage. Well, that's basically the drainage. Yeah. The drainage system mm. cannot hold the capacity of water which is now being delivered. You saw even the... We, we, we build, but we don't remember that it will rain. So the expressway was filled to capacity. Yeah. The, the, the water flow in the, in the, in the estates. What was it, Makwamba? Even uh, people went and blocked uh, along Chalbi Drive, you know, just the junction of Chalbi Drive and Convent Drive. You saw people uh, bought properties there and for 100 million. Mm. Very expensive properties. Ambassadors, ministers, they there, governors, they there. Yeah. But they went and built on the river path, the path of the river, and left a very narrow path here for the river to pass. On a Makamba, you Imetosha Maji. You know, and they concretized it and say that the river will not go beyond the concrete because they have built a concrete tube, concrete uh, tunnel for the mm -hmm. river to pass. <laughs> and then their, their houses now are not livable. The structure, I think, is destroyed. Uh, the water flow yesterday, I think, uh, it was the height of almost five, six meters that day at night. And when everybody was sleeping, you know, it was very unfortunate that even them, they felt. But, you know, we told them that, you know, when we're always complaining that, please don't build on the path of the river. Don't build on wetlands. You always say that, you know, we don't value development. We don't value investments. And now you see. And we beg you that, can you please just listen? The, the, the water cannot change its path because you built on it. You remember what happened to Nakamot UK? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water was... That's right. Yeah. Mother Nature. Yeah. <laughs> it's very vicious. Mm -hmm. More vicious than fire. If we are, let's say we live here on Dennis Spirit, mm -hmm. the people will come here from what? Like the nearest slum or... So mm -hmm. the, those people come <laughs> and, you know, like Chalbi is next to it, it's Waruko. Yes. So all they need is a thousand people mm -hmm. to approve. Then you just see things coming up. Yeah, you know, public participation is not done right. And uh, it's a cartel. Mm -hmm because uh, the middle class don't want to participate. Even the ones where we try to encourage them, you don't get more than 20 people. You get 5,000 people complaining, but not more than 20 people turn up. 
juicy when I was going to stop that development on Mwingi Road. You saw 25 people were messaging and calling me every day. But when I turned up at that site, I expected at least five of them to come out and say that, oh, we have called the MCS, we have called you severely, can you please just stop this structure? You're always being killed at the site alone. The middle class is not interested in participating in some of these things. So what happened is that the developers look for people to hire for them, participants from elsewhere, like Mlolongo. They get people from Ruai, Ruaka. They get people from Dandora. Mm. You know, come hire them. You know, the person who facilitated that is given probably 200,000. Every one of them is given 1,000 shillings, 2,000 shillings for the day. You know, they sit for you and sign for you as the resident of the area. Well, they are not. You know, and that's how the buildings come. So when you go to NEMA, which 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 should uh, hold the record for public participation, mm. you ask them for the records. They'll give you people whom you don't know. Nowadays in Kilalashua, you get a situation where there is no social place, common place for us. If you go, it's corporate. It's paid. Maybe I have, you know, maybe Baraza Media Lab. You go there, but it's paid. You have to be a member there. It's it's very expensive. Parents have to fork out maybe probably twenty, thirty thousand shillings more for them to socialize in such situations. I don't think that's how you need to build a community. I think you need to build a community by creating safe spaces, you know, basketball courts, tennis courts, places where people can jog. And you cannot make money just from structures, buildings. I think you can also make money from parks. You know, if you create a recreational park where people can just go, you know, skate, sit down, just reflect, you know. Uh, but it seems like somebody told Kenyans that unless you build Flaws, many flaws going up. They're not going to make money from such a plot. Do we have like a uh, public land that should have been allocated for that in Kilelesha? Mm -hmm. Even if there is none, they are built land. Always the rule was if you wanted to build, the first priority should be given to government if you lack government. But you have a situation in Nairobi where, like in Kilelesha, the chief is sitting on a road reserve. Today he's living in a container where they don't even have space to step out. Akitoka Inje have to get into the, build, the the structure, which is a container, a 20 feet. The DO, which is now called the ACC, is sitting inside there. The assistant chief, the two assistant chiefs, wanna car up on Dani. The MCA, I work from my car. Because the money given for you as rent is not enough for you to employ, uh, to, to, to rent an office. You see? But we have tried to, to, to identify two or three plots which were public land, which have not been built, and we hope that we are trying to push the government to ensure that they are recovered and they are built as a MCA office, ward admin office, and chief and sub-chief and the ADO should be housed there. Because it's very unfortunate that also people are entrusted with power. Some of them, you know, allocated these things to individuals, and, uh, and that's how we lost them. But I believe that in a period in, the, in, in, in this regime of Sakaja, we can easily easily recover two or three plots and make them public plots. But also, the people, you know, because we, we still have people who have one acre, two acres, three acres, priority should be given government to build a children play park. You know, if somebody, a public common park, you know, it exists elsewhere. What, what, why should the, why shouldn't the government build, if you're going to build affordable housing, people are not going to be living in those affordable housing 24-7. They need places to go and walk. So we need public open spaces, common areas where you can go, jog, run, sit, you know, just enjoy the city. But now the city should not be too stressful that Friday, everybody's on the road trying to run away from the city. Like, you know, there's a time you're really pushing for the closure of all these bars. And <laughs> I was not push, I was I was not pushing for the closure. <laughs> I, what I was I was trying to bring sanity. You're advocating <laughs> for sanity, <laughs> which for leads to closure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, you know, like now we are fighting. For, uh, I'm telling you the situation for developments, mm. where we are fighting for the buildings to have limits. But I'm telling you that the people who can benefit most from our argument are the developers, because every new development cannibalizes the old one. Mm. Yeah, devalues the old one. So even for them, their investment is not safe. But also for the the, the bars and, uh, and and nightclubs, we ask them that Kilalesha is nine uh, three kilometers by three kilometers. It's nine square kilometers. So nine square kilometers. How do you justify having forty two bars and nightclubs? The you know, nightclubs probably ten, but the others are bars. How do you justify that? Minimum staggering distance. 
<laughs> why do you justify minimum staggering distance? <laughs> yeah, you know, it is not right. And also, imagine those are bars. Mm. You have not put the kiosks, the wines and spirits. Mm -hmm. And the wines and spirits on Friday, they are bars. Because one stool comes, then you're, you, by the end of the, by midnight, you have like 20, 30 people drinking in that same area. There is no restroom there. So they are relieving themselves on the people's walls and, yeah. you know, vegetation nearby. So it's a whole mess that when you come there, people are selling vegetables nearby there. Because the kiosk, the wines and spirit always sells near a grocery uh, lady, you know. But but what, what happens is that when you come in the morning, you hear, you feel the stench of human waste. Mm -hmm. But somebody selling you food nearby. So it's not even healthy. It's not even healthy. And some of them, we are trying to close them. We are telling them that, you know, if you have tried, you have not been able to behave and you have not been able to operate in such a manner that, you know, promotes good health, then the best thing is that you're just going to be... Like, for wines and spirits, there's not even a question. And we, we are very appreciative of the, the deputy president who is leading them. Because sometimes you need the political goodwill to close some of these things. It's, 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 it's us politicians who protect such people, who create such a mess and... Yeah. You know, uh, uh, we are very successful in some areas, but <laughs> we are meeting resistance in some. Are we talking about the noises in the residential areas? Noises also, we have been able to at least remind people that, you know, you don't have to torture the people who are going to sustain you. Because if you are serving the people in Kilalesho, you expect the neighbors to sustain you for a very long time. But how are you going to sustain, they're, they're going to sustain your business? Because you are, you are there to make money. How are you going to sustain your business for 10, 20 years if you torture them? If they get home, they can't sleep. Because they need to leave your establishment, go, relax, sleep, so that they can go to work tomorrow mm -hmm. and make more money to come and spend at your place. Mm -hmm. But you torture them. That they start fighting domestic fight, mingi, you know, the family gets broken. Now they cannot sustain the life which they have been trying to live. It's, it's not sustainable beyond five years. So we tell them that, can you please close some? Uh, yeah, all soundproof, so that when I get out of that, and also when you're selling up to Sunday, you know, because Saturday sometimes is a very good party time, yeah, and you find that people go drink Mpaka Sambili Asubui on Sunday, hmm. and you're living with your small daughter, you're going to church, you're seeing people skimpily dressed, because the vice economy comes with everything, and also you're seeing people selling drugs, hard drugs, hmm. you know, because these kids know. When people are about Lishana Vito and they watch in movies how, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the inner cities of the U.S., people get drugs and sell drugs uh, to car owners and, uh, and, and water border riders. They know what is happening. They know how the exchange is done. So they are going to tell you, Daddy, an owner, what are they doing? Are they selling cocaine? <laughs> you mm. see? Yeah. <laughs> and you're seeing it on a third road. Wow. You are seeing a third road. You see, they, they tell you that, you know, that Mogoka place... My friends, so-and-so, always get, uh, there's something called Ndovu, where they put this tobacco, the, <laughs> the tobacco, which it looks like Kuber, they put it there, you know. So you have your, your son who is a Form 1 or Form 2, having drugs behind the teeth for the whole day. Wow. You see? You see? So that's why we try to, my, my biggest problem was not the noise. My biggest problem was the, the drugs and the prostitution and the, you know, the kind of vice culture which you don't want near your residential area. Mm -hmm. It is just we could not mention, because there's a place we will try to fight the drugs. You know, in Jaya Center, mm -hmm. there are these kiosks on the ring road, they are near Jaya Center. All they sell uh, chai. Mm -hmm. But what we know is that they don't say chai is a, is a secondary business there. The big business there is, uh, is something else. And whenever we try to close those places and we try to organize them to be decent and so on, what happens is that the middle class rises up against us. Because the kids who are addicted to hard drugs stay alive by those kiosks remaining open. If you remove the kiosk, the parents don't know how they are going to make the kids who are addicted hmm. stay alive. And the authorities, what do they do? If you try, any OCS who has tried, ever tried to crack down on that place, it uh, has always gone. Huh? <laughs> it's always been transferred. Instant transfer. Instant transfer. <laughs> Anybody, you know, the ones who stay long are the ones who are going to look away and let the thing happen. Yeah. So if you try to, to get involved so much, you, you, you find sometimes the middle class is very vicious on you because these are bank managers, you know, uh, people are very influential in the society and they're going to make one, two, three calls and you're going to be 
you are going to lose your position in the area. And you know, Kiliman is very lucrative. No policeman wants to go away from, <laughs> from the station. <laughs> Kunado. <laughs> Kunado. Mm. And it's comfortable. You know, Kunado and it's not as stressful as Dandora, you yeah. know, Ngembakasi mm. and so on. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 